Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all grinding well in Warframe. Actually, I hope you're taking it a little easier in Warframe because today's vid is going to be about how you can overcome the mind-numbingly unnecessary grind that is sealing fractures and collecting thermia out in the Valis. That's right, I'm going to reveal some of the absolutely laziest ways to, well, get your Opticore Vandal if you haven't already. I don't see anyone grinding for Thermia once they have all of Hildren's parts, which uh, honestly takes just a few runs and most people would have probably stopped playing since when the event first launched anyway. Some players may be looking to collect the Ephemeras and or Articulas though, so this guide may be useful to you if you fall in that category. All you're going to need for this video essentially is a Mesa and Amesha. Honestly, if I keep making crappy puns like this, one day something's just gonna happen to me. Right, so let's get this over with. I'm gonna assume you know how sealing and collecting Thermia works, but for the sake of info, it's basically mobile defense. That's even more soul crushing with tedious bits that I have no idea how it even contributes to the player's experience or even D's pocket. It's not like you could buy a bunch of Thermia for plats. But then again, maybe they want you to work hard for that Opticore Vandal, and we all know how the community reacted to that. But let's keep the rent to a minimum. Even though somewhat tedious, you could solo the work of Sealing Fractures without too much effort. Kinda depends on your Warframe and weapons. I did it with a Chroma and Rattlegun Skid Gun back then. But today, we're gonna be putting the spotlight on Mesa. Why? Because I find her the most fun to use in farming for Thermia. You know, gotta find more ways to love your waifu. I mean, for her abilities and not just aesthetics wise all over again. Feel free to share your own ideas, what Warframe you think works best, uh, everything in the comments down below. But don't you dare put something down like Limbo easy win. For reasons beyond the scope of this video, Limbo doesn't work consistently. And I have a big issue with that. But that's uh, another rant for another day, I guess. So basically for all you Mesa mains out there, the build will be similar to one you'd run around with in Index. or think of a peacemaker build with slightly lesser strength and more duration. The build doesn't have to be perfect, as you can see I don't even have my mods maxed out here and uh, some of them may look a little out of place like that uh, umbral intensify, but most of the mods are fairly easy to get. I just went with steel charger for the aura since the polarity really limits what you could put in there. Your other choices involve damage buffs for specific weapon types, so really just pick whatever you want. Feel free to slap a forma or two on your Mesa, but if it can't be bothered to waste time with the formas, then this is as good as it's gonna get. Here's a budget version of the modified index build, in case you don't have the prime mods on hand. You don't even need to unlock the Exilus slot, but if you want, you could use one of Mesa's augments, Mesa's Waltz, which allows you to move around a bit when in Peacemaker mode. I know, not really necessary, but it adds more pleasure for me and my Mesa. Also, I'm completely comfortable with running Mesa at minimum health and shield here. You can swap out Augur Secrets with Vitality for some survivability. That's totally fine. You can also choose to not equip a melee and take advantage of Mesa's passive. If you're playing with a soft, squishy Mesa like me, then your third ability, Shadow Shield, needs to be on for most, if not all the time. Especially if you decide to carry along and use more than one coolant canister together, which you can kinda do in solo by using your operator, but it's kinda clumsy, and the enemies do get random buffs, which will definitely make this annoying job that much more annoying. Generally, what you wanna do is fight off the first few waves aggressively to get the alert level down to zero. Once that is done, you can kinda chill out for the rest of your stint. Stay close to the canister, but don't focus too much on it. Move around and scan the area clean with Peacemaker. Sometimes, depending on the number of enemies and the location of the Thermia Fracture, you may need to use Peacemaker more frequently for extended periods, which means energy pizzas are a requirement. Actually, I strongly recommend you get them before even thinking of farming Thermia. As for weapons that you should use, well, it's gonna be your regulators like 95% of the time. Just mod the thing for radiation with all your quote unquote meta pistol mods. You can bring along a Rattlegut Skid Gun as a supplementary weapon to deal with occasional nullies, along with perhaps a sniper for long range clearance. Also, having Magus Elevate on your operator means a happier time for you and your Mesa. Magus Lockdown will also help you to get out of screwy situations like when the mob just doesn't stop 
or you run out of energy for Peacemaker. It's a great arcane that buys you some time to regain composure before firing away with those regulators. As far as focus schools go, protective dash from Vazarin is a no-brainer, if you have it. If it's too much to farm for, then no worries, it's more of a uh, backup slash assurance than a requirement. I enjoy playing this mobile defense V2 a little more with Mesa than I did with uh, Chroma or Limbo or even Frost, actually a lot more. I find that it's just the right amount of challenge for me and keeps me occupied enough to not even notice the time gone by waiting for the canister to collect Thermia. But what if that's still too much work? Well then, want to know the absolute laziest way to get yourself some diluted Thermia? The answer to your question lies not in any Warframes or in some sort of special weapon, it's actually an Arcwing. Yes, an Arcwing that will allow you to farm for Thermia in the laziest way possible, literally. The Arcwing that we're referring to here is of course Amasia. It's not that hard to build, you're just gonna need a total of 10 Nitain Extracts. Assuming you're uh, already in a clan where the blueprints have been researched and are readily available. Anyway, 10 Nitain Extracts would have been a nightmare to farm for pre-Night Wave, but these days you only need like 30 Wolf Grants. And can we take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this thing is? This is my new favorite Arcwing. I was all Itzal for life before trying out Amasia, but right now this is probably the Arcwing I'm gonna take with me into Railjack. Probably. So anyway, here's the build. A lot of these mods you should already have if you've played enough Arcwing missions, which uh, may be a little too much to expect. Honestly, that primed Morphic Transformer aside, the most difficult mod for me to obtain was Efficient Transferal. It drops from attack drones with a massive rate of 0.06%. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I recommend just buying it off of trade chat. Trust me, it's worth it. But if you still want to farm, then the Arcwing Rush mission on Kepler Phobos is the place to go. Keep in mind that you need to destroy only two of the three ships. Each ship destroyed equals a rotation. So if you take down one ship, that's rotation A. And if you take down two, that's rotation B. The dumb thing is that you only get rewards for the rotation you achieved. You're not gonna get rewards for all three rotations by destroying all three ships. And since the mod we want drops on rotation B, that's why you should leave one ship to escape. The drop rate for efficient transferal is okay, I guess, at 3.76%. Took me four tries, but you can expect to get one by the time you've done about uh, 15 runs. So anyway, tell me how this Amasia works, right? Well, I'm gonna explain the abilities while demonstrating how to collect Thermia, so feel free to hit pause whenever you like. First up, once you've grabbed a canister, locate a fracture and lower yourself to start the Thermia collection process. Don't exit Arcwing mode, this is important. Now as soon as you've placed the canister, hit your second ability, Benevolent Decoy, three times for three stacks and quickly get yourself up to a 100 meter height at least from the canister. So what does Benevolent Decoy do here? Well. Think of Frost's globe and the way that works. Essentially, you will have two bubbles here, an inner sphere which blocks incoming and outgoing damage or projectiles, and also an outer sphere. All damage or projectiles will be directed towards the inner bubble. It sucks in bullets like a vacuum. And uh, what happens next is that bubble will absorb the damage and convert that into a percentage of healing for all allies within the radius of the second larger bubble. So basically, if you cast a benevolent decoy onto the canister, it becomes pretty much invulnerable for the duration of the ability. And the best part is how you can quickly stack it three times for a total duration of 104 seconds. And for the whole 104 seconds, you can just chill high up in the sky with not even the slightest worry for the canister's safety. Seriously, you may feel a little less confident the first time you uh, try this, but trust me, it works like magic. Now you will have to do it again once more as the canister will take 200 seconds before it's done collecting Thermia. When the duration counter hits like 15 seconds, turn on both your third and fourth ability as you lower down towards the canister to cast another three stacks of Benevolent Decoy. Amasia's third ability, Warding Grace, basically makes you immune to status and slows down enemies in a large radius around you. Amasia's fourth ability, Vengeful Rush, is where I start thinking to myself that maybe someone in DE got fired after making too many OP stuff in Warframe a while ago, perhaps. You know what Vengeful Rush does? It converts all damage done to you into energy. Yeah, you heard me right. 
and is not even a channeling ability, like Warning Grace. It's a one-time cast that can cost as little as 45 energy and last as long as 39 seconds. Also, did I mention that it buffs the ability duration, range, and strength of all your other abilities, like by 10%? Oof. Vengeful Rush will stop working though once you have full energy, so it's not a bad idea to hit Amacious 3 to slow down the energy regen. Once you've safely reactivated the protective bubbles for your canister, fly back up and witness the utter foolishness of your enemies. Seriously, I'd even recommend personally to bring something with super high status like a Tyberon Prime with the radiation build to proc some radiation on the Terra Moas or a Jackal and watch them battle it out like the idiots they are for maximum lulls. Be warned though, it gets super boring a lot faster than if you were to actively run around with your Warframe guarding the canister. Then again, this whole ordeal of uh, collecting Thermia is super boring anyway, so that's kind of a moot point, maybe. I suggest having your phone nearby to scroll on Reddit for some memes while you wait, but remember to keep an eye on the duration, because once you miss that, then you're probably screwed. It's okay if you mess up the first couple of tries, Trust me, this is the easiest way to get Thermia that borderline feels illegal. I cannot think of or know of any other way to cheese this whole thing, but if you do, then please let me know down in the comments. That would be a great big help to other players as well. I hope I've helped you find new love for Mesa and or the Amasia Arcwing, which I feel is OP. Probably gonna get nerfed when Railjack comes out, but that's just me with my baseless speculations. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.